Welcome to Coffee with Russ. Thank you for coming and being here today. Today's Friday for me, and I'll see you in church on Sunday. But I want to invite you to continue to be a part of this. You can go into my blog, and you can get these delivered to you every day. And you become a part of the email list. I'll be happy to send these to you. I want to continue with the culture vulture of mediocrity, culture vultures or anything, or anyone that is trying to steal or destroy God's design for you. I have here a couple of uh, phone chargers. This one right here, um, yeah, it's a, I probably shouldn't trash products online, but anyhow, very, very slow, like, oh dear, um, it's, I don't use it for much of anything, just little odds and ends around here. This one, however, it charges my phone, my laptop, my iPad. It works and it does a great job. This is a great product. This is mediocre. And there are a lot of things in your life that you use every day that are just good enough. But I don't want you to take the same attitude towards yourself. Missionary Robert Mor Morrison in 1807, at age of 25, was fired up about going to China and being a missionary to China. 27 years later, he had only baptized 10 people. 27 years later, 10 people, that's all. But his works to translate the Chinese language, create a dictionary to translate uh, the Bible into Chinese, opened the door for hundreds of missionaries to lead thousands of believers, which turned into millions of believers because he stayed at his post. He didn't allow himself to become discouraged and quit, even though what was going on around him didn't look successful at all. And many times we become discouraged because we don't see the success that we think we ought to see, and we become Mediocre, we create excuses. Well, why bother? Why should I make an extra effort? And those are the things that steal momentum from your life. Um, in my message on Sunday, talking about Peter and his restoration when Jesus meets him by the, the, uh, uh, by the shore of the lake. And he's there asking him, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Right there at that particular moment, it changed for Peter because he realized that Jesus was going to give him another chance and that he didn't have to live in shame anymore. He didn't have to make excuses. Oh, well, I'm just going to go be a fisherman now. I've, I've disqualified myself from um, being a follower of Jesus. Will not happen to you either. So I've heard this phrase used many times. Good is always best's eternal enemy. Actually, it comes from the 1700s. And if you settle for good enough, you'll never achieve your best. And I want you to achieve your best in your relationship with Jesus Christ and your relationship with your church. Let's pray a dangerous prayer together. Dear Lord, give us the courage to run this vulture off, to stop making excuses, and to do the things that we have never imagined we could ever do together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you Sunday.